Hello friends and thank you for joining me here at No Toxic Home. As always, I am delighted that you have blessed me with your presence today. We have a video up entitled Lucifer, Luciferia, and Tartaria. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I pray that you will check that video out because it is a very interesting topic and it gives you a little bit of background into what we're going to discuss in this video. Now, if you are watching this video, if you're streaming this video, much is expected to you. To whom much is given, much is expected. You are expected to be living your life every moment, every breath that you breathe to the glory of the Lord. And that means that you're not spending your time figuring out what the evil people of the world are going to do next. You're not spending your time listening to false prophets. You've prayed for discernment. You've been given discernment because if you ask and mean it, Holy Spirit will guide you to the truth. You will be given spiritual gifts like you can't even believe. You will be able to identify false prophets right and left. And you will find that nearly everyone is a false prophet who is producing videos online. You will find that very quickly. It's an unfortunate truth, but it is the truth, my friend. So on that video, when we had comments live on YouTube, we had a couple of comments that suggested that the thousand year reign had already occurred. Now, if you look for those videos that discuss this topic, you'll find that for the most part, the people who are declaring that the thousand year reign has already occurred don't even claim to be followers of Yeshua. So that's a little bit concerning right there to be listening to them, don't you think? Of course, there are Christians who claim that the thousand year reign has already occurred. But here's the thing. If it has, then we would be able to prove it from this book right here. Okay? So, Revelation chapter 20 is where the thousand year reign is discussed. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Sorry about the sun, about the light. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So since it says he should deceive the nations no more until after he's loosed, that tells you that Satan will deceive the nations prior to the thousand year reign and after when he is loosed for a little season. So, if that's the case, then the number one sign of the end times in my video, the number one sign of the end times would be deception. And if you read your Bible, as I pray that you are, because you really need to be, if you are reading, or excuse me, if you are watching this video, much is expected of you, my dear, much. To whom much is given, much is expected. Now, if you are not able to have internet access because you can't even scrape by enough money to purchase food for your family, then much, then little is expected. If you're living in a slum, as in, you know, some place such as India, etc., well, little is expected of you. But if you're able to stream, much is expected of you. You need to be studying to prove yourself approved unto God. If you want to be called a son or a daughter of the Most High. So you need to be breathing every breath and examining your life, everything in your life, to determine whether you are living for his honor or for the honor of the world. And of course, the God of this world is Satan. So, deception. Okay, so right now there's clearly deception about almost everything. All right. So there's that. Thousand years should be fulfilled. After that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, I don't have right next to me my uh, deep study tool for that, but a little season. A season could mean 
a variety of different things. So we can't really know for sure how long that means. But if you have a thousand years and then it says a little season, then it shouldn't be for that long. It certainly should be for, what, 170 years or so? That definitely shouldn't be the case. But according to those who believe that the thousand year reign has occurred, many of them believe that a reset did occur in around 1852, I wanna say, or something like that. And I agree, yeah, something definitely did happen around that time. There's all sorts of evidence that that's the case. What exactly happened, I don't know. All right, so, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. All right, so if the thousand-year reign had already happened, then... There may or may not be evidence around us of the rain itself. Yes, there could have been buildings built. Now, in my video on Lucifer, Luciferia, and Tartaria, I discuss these old world buildings that are labeled as evidence of Tartaria and claim, and I back it up, that this is in reality indications uh, and leftovers of Luciferia. And if you simply examine the architecture, such as the domes, domes are not holy. <laughs> domes are occultic and evil. Everything about domes is evil. If you look at the Capitol building of the United States, for example, there's a crypt under there, my dear. <laughs> so the Capitol building, even of the United States, the dome itself, there's some sort of evil going on there and if you examine just so many things that the United States has done well yeah that's that's true all right so let's consider some of the other aspects of the architecture of Tartaria or Luciferia which I discuss in this architecture is what is claimed to be remnants and evidence of the thousand year reign so this this architecture should be holy, right? It should not be evil, it should be not occultic, it should not be satanic, it should be 100% holy. If Yeshua came down here for a thousand years and reigned, then everything that he built would be wonderful, it would be glorious, it would be honoring to the Most High. When you walked into a building such as that, you would feel connected to the Lord, you would not feel spiritually attacked and spiritually vulnerable and i have visited many of these buildings in the united states solely my parents were very big into history my dad was school superintendent and so we visited a lot of historical sites over the years as i was a child when i was a child going on vacation every year and I never felt good. I never felt safe in these old world buildings. I always felt evil there, the presence of evil. And if you look at the statues, many of the statues are of creatures that are clearly evil. There are gargoyles. There are paintings that are ancient as well that have been incredibly preserved on these buildings inside of them typically. And these paintings are evil as well. The statues sometimes are of angels and they're doing very strange things, <laughs> quite frankly. So there's, an ev there's evidence right there that these buildings are not of Yeshua. They are not of my Lord. They might be of yours, but they are certainly not of mine. So those buildings themselves that are claimed to be Tartarian by most people, but some people claim to be evidence of the thousand year reign, those buildings in and of themselves actually do not confirm that the thousand year reign has occurred because those buildings are evil. Straight up. All right. The rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath not no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, 
Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Is anyone gathering the nations together to battle? Not right now that I'm aware of. They went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Where does it say that Jesus left once the devil was loosed? Where does it say that in your Bible? It doesn't say that Jesus left in my Bible. It says that we reigned. It says they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It doesn't say, and then, and then Satan is loosed out of the prison. The nations are deceived by Satan. They, Satan gathers his armies, these deceived nations together. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, compassed the camp of the saints. And the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Where does this happen? Where did Jesus go? It doesn't say that Jesus leaves. It doesn't say he comes down and reigns for a thousand years and then he leaves while well, the nations are deceived. It doesn't say that the people who reign for a thousand years with our Lord and Savior suddenly disappear. Where, where do they go when the nations are deceived? Where are the, the people who reigned with Christ? Where are they at? It doesn't say anything about them being taken up into heaven or anything. All right, so there's that. There's This is just scratching the surface, all right, of the issues with this. Now, Revelation. So many people think they have a clue about Revelation, but they haven't even read it in the King James. Please see my video on Satan's favorite Bible translations because most Bible translations are actually satanic and we settled on textus receptus based and i discuss about a year of research in that topic all right so if we are indeed in the thousand year indeed during the period after the, directly after the thousand year reign then we would be able to prove it by looking at some of the things that happen in Revelation, all right? So, here's my thing, one of them, <laughs> as far as the first seal goes. Now, uh, my husband and I state that the first seal was opened in March of 2020, and we've only had confirmation that this is indeed the case since that time. Now, when that occurred, Everything shut down all at once. Now, a lot of people have been deceived by false prophets for over a hundred years for certain that, oh, the end is nigh, etc., etc., etc. And we're way in Revelation 18, etc., etc. Well, you got this is Revelation is in order, okay? If you believe that it's not in order, then we have very different definitions of the word after. We also have very different definitions of the word first second, third, and so on and so forth. So Revelation is clearly chronological. It's literally impossible for everything to be happening all at the same time because of these words such as after and first. Now, in order for things to happen in seven years, everything has to be happening all at once. Again, false prophets abound. You can't listen to anybody. You have to read your Bible yourself. I am not telling you that you need to listen to us and believe what we say. I'm telling you, read your Bible yourself. Study it. Because if you are not studying for yourself, you will be led astray and you will go right down the road of perdition. Because if you are falling for basic, 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 easily disproven false doctrines, you're going to fall for anything. And some of these false doctrines, such as the one that declares that angels came down and had sex with women, easily disproven. Go look at Paul Sandu's videos. He has like 12 videos on this topic. The evidence couldn't be clearer. 
But the people who want to make merchandise of, out of you, who sell these occultic books that are clearly occultic, because if you look at the books, they've got aliens and spaceships and all these occultic symbols on the cover. So they're telling you right there, they're not actually following the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're following these people, if you're following that doctrine, saying that angels, which are spirits, can impregnate humans, you are bordering on the unforgivable sin, my friend. That is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. That is the unforgivable sin. And if you engage in that, that is unforgivable. I didn't make this up. It's in my Bible. Because you're suggesting that angels, which are, yes, they're special, but Holy Spirit is different. Holy Spirit had the ability to impregnate because Holy Spirit is a different spirit. So you are walking a very dangerous path if you are believing that doctrine. Didn't mean to get off onto that. All right, so the first seal, we've seen so many precursors of everything else that is to come. The weather just keeps getting wonkier and wonkier. We're seeing signs in the heavens, so many signs in the heavens. The sun has changed its path. The moon is utterly unpredictable. Our animals are completely confused. Our plants are super weird. We're having precursors to famine, which is the third seal. Yeah, famine is the third seal. We're see obviously, there's always wars and rumors of wars. That's nothing new right there. So I can't actually say that there's precursors of that because we've had precursors of that at least since I was born. And so you can't really count that as a precursor. We're seeing precursors to the mark of the beast. This is not the mark of the beast. Read your Bible. It has to do with faith. It doesn't mean that it's not toxic. <laughs> I have an article with over 75 authoritative citations about these things, all right? Toxins are toxic are toxic. They hurt you. They interfere with your ability to commune with the Lord Jesus Christ, with Holy Spirit, with your Creator. And so you need to get away from toxins. I try not to tell people what to do besides read your Bible and stop listening to people who don't know what they're talking about. But this is essential. This is really important information. And yes, of course, we're not supposed to take thought for our body so much. But if your body is attached to your soul, which is attached to your spirit, they're going to impact one another. And I know this for a fact because I felt detached when I was on pharmaceuticals and as did my husband. We have been through so much that we try to share with you as we are able to. And like right now I'm like super gross and sweaty because I've been out scything grass. <laughs> but I really needed to get this video recorded. So, so we're seeing all sorts of precursors. And so that's where we believe that we're at right now. Those who say that we are in, oh, you know, chapter 12 of Revelation, the woman with child, what, have, what about everything that happened before that in Scripture? We can't be there. It's literally impossible. Those who say, well, the false prophet is here right now and the false prophet is Trump or Biden or whatever. Sure, it might be. I don't know. I don't even know if the false prophet is alive right now. This is a long game, my dear. This is not a seven year wham bam all done sort of thing. This is a marathon. And if you read your Bible, you'll know that. Don't believe the false prophets. You have to open your mind to the fact that you've probably been lied to about everything. And that includes what the church tells you is truth. You have to read scripture for yourself. Now, when I first read the book of Revelation, as an adult with understanding, with the guidance of Holy Spirit, in a King James version, and that's important as well, my understanding completely changed. And I was absolutely shocked, astonished, and appalled that almost every church I'd ever been to, and I've literally been to hundreds of churches because I used to sing at them, and then I also was a religious studies minor. Almost all the churches teach a seven-year tribulation, but that's not in the Bible at all. Not even close. No, no way. So when I asked Holy Spirit for guidance, I was led to 38 years, which I believe was in Deuteronomy, if I remember correctly. It's this generation shall not pass away. I keep being guided to 40 years as a generation. 
in scripture and of course some argue that 80 years is a generation most people focus on israel israel doesn't matter i mean obviously it matters some but if you're focusing on israel then you're not focusing on what's going on around you what's going on in the world at at large i do not believe that israel that we are told today is actually the real israel simply based on a lot of evidence and research look at the mountains okay so anyways i'm sorry i keep getting off topic but there are just so many things that so many people are deceived about and they all feed into one another and they all work together to prevent you from understanding where you're at where we are at in prophecy if you think that the book of revelation and the book of daniel are unsealed and that there's someone on youtube or someone who's written a book and they know everything and they've identified who the false prophet is and they know all of these things they know what this is going to look like and that's going to look like they're lying to you straight to your face because Revelation and Daniel, the authors, Daniel and John, <laughs> were specifically told that parts of it would be sealed and that they would return to prophesy again. And so there's literally no way we could understand and know everything. Things are being revealed to my husband and I on an almost daily basis. And we've been doing a deep dive lately into the first and actually we just did the first and second seal ourselves together and whoa we did excuse me a lexical study excuse me again we did a lexical word study looking up every word and wow we have a completely different understanding now it's not well i guess it's not completely different but it's a more thorough in-depth comprehension and understanding of what we can expect to see very soon very soon being in the next 10 years <laughs> because we are in a period where it will be birth pains and wow i look like i'm glowing like an angel <laughs> from the light i'm sorry if it's blinding to you <laughs> suddenly the sun came out it's been raining all day all right so we have the the first six seals in the first or in the sixth seal we have in revelation chapter 6 verse 12 I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So, every mountain and island were moved out of their places. As far as we know, every mountain and island hasn't been moved, but... Uh, I I would give you that yeah it's possible that it's happened and we don't know we don't know it but there isn't really evidence of an earthquake that has had such magnitude that it has impacted the entire world there should be evidence of that even a thousand years later in my personal opinion but the stars of heaven fell unto the earth as a fig tree casteth his her untimely fruit and if you read I can't even remember where it's at, but somewhere else it basically tells you that all the stars fall from the sky during this period of time. So the stars would have had to have been replaced, but that's the, th the thing with that is that if this was the thousand year reign, then the new heaven would be here, right? Look at all the stars that are in the sky and then read the book of Revelation and tell me that almost all the stars are out of the sky because you can't you can't say that just look at all the stars in the sky it's not possible the new heaven and new earth don't come down until revelation chapter 21 after satan has been dealt with not it, so it doesn't even make any sense so the people who are saying that a thousand year reign has already occurred apparently haven't read the book of revelation at least not in the king james version because this is pretty clear where are the star why are there so many stars in the sky if satan is being loosed for his little season right now why are why are there so many stars in the sky where'd they come from they shouldn't be up there okay so there's that and then later on every mountain 
I gotta, I gotta find where it's at. <laughs> every mountain is moved and every m mountain and island flee. Where is it at? There's a plague of hail. There's a 10 kings. By the way, the mark of the beast is not close. It's a long ways away. If you read your Bible, you'll know this. I don't remember. I, d I must not have marked where it says that the every mountain and island flee. But I will find that and I will put that below, that verse below so that you can look at it. Because if you are listening to anyone who's discussing Bible verses, I pray that what you do is you grab your Bible as well. And when they say, this verse says, blah, 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 that you look, that you pause the video and then you look because many, many, many people will say this verse says X, Y, Z in the Bible. And if you go grab your Bible and look at it, that is not what it says at all. Lying liar faces, my dear. They lie and lie and lie. All right. So there's also in the vials, of course, <laughs> that, that is the period of God's wrath. We are not appointed to his wrath. It doesn't mean we're not gonna be here during his anger because we are in in the period of anger right now. He's just getting started, he's just getting warmed up. There is great hope, but you have to endure to the end. You have to prove yourself worthy. You are not going to get out of this without a scratch on you or without any suffering. Everybody's gotta go at some point, right? So if you're gonna go, why not make it as a martyr for your Lord and Savior. That's our opinion, <laughs> or our opinions. But the, so in the first vial, you've got the sore, which comes upon the people with the mark of the beast. In the second vial, I mean, you've got the, in the sea, the sea becomes the blood, as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. So if every living soul died in the sea, then why are there so many, animals in the sea right now? That's a valid question in my book. And of course, there are, there's the fourth vial, and this is all from chapter 16 of Revelation, by the way, where the vial was poured out upon the sun, power was given unto him to scorch men with fire, men were scorched with great heat. Heat, fire, is what God uses to clean up things to clean up sin he uses uses fire to cleanse and if you read in second peter such as i discuss in my video on luciferia which i've already mentioned and i'll link to below it's very clear and if, and if you read the start of genesis if you do a an in-depth word study if you read in ezekiel and isaiah you read about the anointed cherub you read about lucifer and lucifer was a man he was not an angel it plainly says who is this man all right so who was this man means that okay that was a man the anointed cherub also is not satan Satan was a murderer from the beginning, scripture tells us. And the anointed cherub was perfect until iniquity was found in him. So those who are telling you that the anointed cherub is the story of Satan are lying to your face, my dear. All right, so you have got to understand that if you are not studying your Bible yourself, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, if you were just listening to videos, going from one video to the next, then you're gonna be led astray right to the road of perdition. You need to be prepared spiritually for battle because this is a time of spiritual battle. We are living in a time of spiritual warfare, not that that's anything new. I actually, when I was a kid, I felt like uh, I would be in that generation of the end times. and. Wow, uh, yeah, just witnessing what's happening is absolutely mind-blowing. Now, of course, there are periods of time in Revelation where things are just melted, basically. And so people take the concept of, for example, the melted castle of Turkey, and they say, oh, well, that's evidence that Revelation has already happened. Okay, well, yes, he will melt 
the elements with fire, scripture tells us. And so, yeah, of course. But that doesn't mean that that happened during Revelation. Because if you read in the Old Testament, what happened? Woo! <laughs> if you just read even since Adam, what has happened? There are periods where buildings were melted. But you got to read your scripture. you got to read your Bible. You have to know it in and out. And when I tell you to read your Bible, what I mean is to read your King James. Not your new King James, because that's not based on the Textus Receptus. The King James is the easiest to get a hold of. The Geneva Bible might have promise. I'm not going to buy one because I'm very happy with my authorized King James and with my 1611. I recommend the 1611 above the authorized because it's got stuff on the sides. And there are also some aspects as well that I believe are better than the authorized. But besides that... If you aren't reading for yourself, you're going to be led astray. And I know I keep saying that, but it seems as though the false prophets repeat themselves as well. <laughs> so they're basically brainwashing you into believing these false doctrines of devils. Oh, it's just, it's so disheartening to me in one way to see that. But at the other aspect is that when I witness how easily people are led astray, I can see how we, these times were foretold because people just go from one sensational video to another. Our videos are not for entertainment value, my friends, at all. They are not for entertainment. They are for edification. They are for information. They are to help you be healthier. They're help you to guide you into hopefully and encourage you to read and study yourself because otherwise you will be led astray. And I know I keep saying that, but it's true and it's a fact. And I don't know why more people don't realize that. So these things that happen in Revelation, yes, some of these things already happened previously. As I've already mentioned, Luciferia. All right, I believe it is, Oh, let's see, let's see, Isaiah 11. No, that's not it. I think it's Jeremiah 4, chapter 4, off the top of my head. Let me look here. Jeremiah chapter 4. Yeah, here we go. All right. So, some people will say that this section, Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23 through 28, that the section is talking about after Noah's flood. Well, obviously Noah's flood happened. Yeah, of course. But there was another flood. And if you read in Second Peter, it says that the heavens and earth, which are now, and it tells us that most people are ignorant of the fact that this isn't the first heaven and earth that there has been. The sons of God are simply a different species similar to humans, sort of like uh, donkeys and horses. So they're able to mate, sons of God can mate with humans, but they're not exactly the same. And so when the sons of God came unto the children of, or, you know, when the sons of God came into the human women and had sex with them, and then the offspring was the mighty men of yore, well, that doesn't imply that angels came down at all. That implies that sons of God came down. And if you read Hebrews, Hebrews is very clear that the sons of God can't possibly have been spiritual beings or just spirit beings. They were physical beings. And so just as, you know, an African-American man and a Aboriginal, I guess that is African-American as well, not African-American, but black. I don't even know what the proper term is today. I'm not intended to offend anyone. I don't care what color your skin is, quite frankly. I never have. But just as different people have different colors of skin and they can all mate together, uh, mate with one another, that, you know, they're all the same. We are all equal in the eyes of the Lord. God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't care whether your background and your genealogy is Jewish or Gentile. He doesn't care. We are all Hebrews. We are all the Hebrews. And it tells us that repeatedly in the New Testament. If you read it, 
and that is very exciting news in my opinion that it doesn't matter that as far as I know that my genealogical history isn't Jewish I don't know there's not really any way to know exactly honestly if you really research it and don't tell me to go do a DNA test <laughs> <laughs> Those are a crapshoot <laughs> and they're utterly unreliable. If you get one from four different companies, you'll get four different results. So the the fact of the matter is that the the true the true Hebrews today, the true Jews today are those who are following the Lord with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind and all their might. So in Jeremiah chapter 4 Verse 23, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. So, if the, this can't be after there was fled, because it says, I beheld, and lo, there was no man. Because Noah and his family were still here. They were in the ship or off the ship. There was still man here. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. Were fled. So this also can't be Genesis 1. 1. It also can't be Genesis 1. 1. Because it says that the birds were fled. Right? If the birds were fled, then they were birds prior to this happening. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by his fierce anger, boom, I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, the fruitful place, so the orchards, the farms, it was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord. So God came and broke these cities down. For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. For this shall the earth mourn, and the heavens above be black, because I have spoken it. I have purposed it, and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. Now I discussed previously in this video, that I keep, just keep mentioning on Luciferia, that Lucifer tried to build something, use various technologies that we can't even comprehend most likely to gain access to the heavens. And it's possible that there is some level of heaven that he was able to access, but the firmament was broken. <laughs> and did he, I don't know, use some sort of crazy pants directed energy weapon? to damage it or did God just just go bing and you know allow that to happen I don't know but if you really want to understand the biblical history the biblical timeline you can't just read what's on the surface and listen to whatever your pastor says you have to look at it like a puzzle sometimes because there are pieces here and there there are breadcrumbs that the Lord has left. Again, to whom much is given, much is expected. You have to study. You have to know when you read something like this in Jeremiah. Oh, whoa. Okay, so this corresponds to, what is it, Isaiah 14, I want to say, is where Lucifer is discussed. Isn't it? I think it's Isaiah 14 off the top of my head. And then... Okay, and then that corresponds to, you know, the beginning of Genesis where it says that the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And when, when you study the word darkness, you find that darkness basically means that there's evil. Where did the evil come from? And then when you look at the serpent, you see that the serpent is evil developed. You have to really seek the deep things of God and be open to completely demolishing what you were taught previously in order to understand and comprehend these things. I'm not here to tell you everything that the Bible says about this period of time. 
because I don't know, I'm still learning myself. This, this discussion that I'm having with you right now, it's taken me over a year to really comprehend it and to really understand it. If you just read, just read Revelation, just Revelation itself, okay, that's it. And you find, okay, so every mountain and island have fled. Do we have mountains and islands? Okay, we do. And where does it say in Revelation that the mountains and islands come back? It doesn't. And where did Jesus go? It doesn't say he leaves. It doesn't say the saints leave. This, that's not what it says at all. You have to read your Bible. You have to understand this. You have to recognize that most people rely on extra biblical texts to support their false doctrines. You have to recognize that most translations of the Bible are evil. They are one of Satan's greatest accomplishments besides the church, which we've got all sorts of videos on that, all right? You have to decide what church in the book of Revelation you want to be a part of. Which one do you want to be a part of? Because there's only one out of seven churches that are discussed at the beginning of Revelation that really have their act together. One out of seven. Which one are you going to be in? We have a video up on that, which I'll link to, in which we discuss it. Which kind of person do you want to be? It's your choice. It's your decision. You can be one who is completely sold out for Christ, running after him every day of your life, breathing every breath for him, living in joy and hope, and doing everything you can to help other people. You're spreading the good news. You are living a life that confuses the heck out of most people. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't understand what you're doing or why you're doing it because you are not living for money you are living for the Lord you are completely sold out to him you're living for eternity you're storing up your treasures in heaven you are not storing up your treasures here on earth you are preparing for battle spiritually mentally and emotionally because you know what is to come, because you know that your creator has given you a guide, not just how to live your life, but he has told you what's gonna happen. He has given you that information. This is incredible, and yes, my face hurts from smiling so freaking hard right now, but it completely blows my mind that the creator of everything in the world has given me a book, not just how to live my life, but he has told me what's gonna happen next. And he has disclosed this to me, of all people. I don't deserve to have this information. I don't deserve to understand the history of creation. I don't deserve to understand this. Who am I to be gifted with this knowledge and understanding? Who am I? No one. I am absolutely no one. But... So who much is given, much is expected. And that's why we do these videos. That's why we take hours a week to share this information with you. This is why we do what we do. This is why we respond to emails. Sorry we don't have time for social media. Please get off of social media. It's a time suck. It's mining your data. There is nothing good about it, hardly at all, except for sharing stuff, which is the only thing the only uh, tool that we use as far as social media goes. We do not spend any time on social media whatsoever. But who am I? Who am I? My identity is in the Lord. That's who I am. I am a daughter of the Most High. I was created to serve Him. And yes, I have suffering. Whew. Mostly when there are new satellites launched. Of course, they're not what we're told. They're they're dirigibles, all right? They're up there by balloons. They're not what we're told. And yes, tropos tropospheric scattering, yes, that's in play. Yes, of course, nothing's what we're told. Cell phones don't work how most people think they work, all right? That's why uh, fiber internet is so problematic for so many people who are canaries in the coal mine. But the, the level of deception out there really requires you to be 100% sold out to the Lord all the time. 
and you really need to pray for discernment in my opinion because of this fact i hope this has been helpful to you this isn't all of the information of course that is derived from the bible um you might also want to check out revelation or isaiah chapter 11. um i also have isaiah 65 but i don't think that that's relevant quite frankly i don't know why i wrote that down but yeah jeremiah 4 i already read that to you read the book of revelation read the olivet discourse which is in matthew 24 We've been told about this. We've been told where we're at. Look at what's happening around us. We are seeing precursors to almost everything. And it's mind blowing to me. Yes, the earthquakes in diverse places are starting. Not to the extent we're seeing famines, the precursors of the mark of the beast, we're seeing more totalitarianism. We're seeing here in the United States, it's a mix between communism and fascism. Communism is, of course, where the government tells the corporations and companies what to do. Fascism is where the companies and corporations tell the government what to do. It's a weird thing here in the United States. Let me tell you that. We are not a democracy. We've never been a democracy ever. Do you understand what a democracy is? See, even something so basic as to what sort of government people live under, people don't even know that. It's never been a democracy here. The Republicans and Democrats are throwing crap at each other saying, you're destroying democracy. We don't have a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic. We always have. <laughs> and look at how it got started. Look at what, look at the slave, ooh, the slave stuff. My goodness, as far as the number of people that came via slave ships from Africa to the United States versus the number of slaves, mm -mm. no, 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 my dear, hardly any of them could possibly have come from Africa. Almost all of them were rounded up here in the United States. There's just so much evidence that even Israel, as I've already mentioned, Israel isn't where we're told. It's not what we're told. I believe it is out west. If you look at the old maps of California, which are accurate on everything else, but they tell us, oh, well, they're just full of it when, you know, they didn't know. They're just stupid. You know, they, they were able to draw exactly the Great Lakes and all of these other parts of the world, but they got California wrong. Mm -hmm. What? And then you look at all of the thousands of dams out there, out west now, that have completely modified the Terra. Something's going on out there. Something went on out there they, that they don't want us to know. And if you look at all of the ancient sites that are discovered and hidden, uh, hidden in the United States, out west especially but across the united states in general they're trying to hide something from us and it's not just the fact that there were giants because of course there were giants yeah of course there were the evidence is everywhere even though the smithsonian probably has however many ginormous stadiums and warehouses full of giant bones they still can't even hide it hide it all <laughs> nothing is what we're told so i understand that the thousand year reign idea that it has already occurred is not a mainstream idea and as such that might find appeal to some might some might find that appealing but just because a belief idea or doctrine is not mainstream does not mean it's accurate if something if someone says a develops a doctrine such as that the sons of god uh, you know, the, the whole Nephilim thing, all right? That whole thing where angels had sex with women. Then they should be able to 100% back it up by this book. They don't need to bring in extra biblical books because extra biblical books are lying to you. You really think Satan can't write his own books? He's got millions of books out there. Look at Darwin's book. Come on. I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> so there is great deception about everything. I hope this has given you just a few pieces of the puzzle. Just use your, use your noggin, think critically, exercise critical thought, shut off the stupid YouTube videos. I've got a, a playlist, I think it's like 90 videos or songs long right now of my favorite music. And it's got lots of Siler's Bald, lots of Waterdeep. They're my two favorite bands. But I, it's entitled Yeshua's Favorite Music or something like that. And I'm constantly adding to it. It's, it's what I listen to. What you put in your body impacts your eternity. So if you are putting doctrines of devils into your body, if you're putting the NIV scripture into your body, if you're putting YouTube videos that say that the thousand year reign has occurred from people who aren't even claiming to be followers of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, if you're putting that in your body, where do you think you're going to be in eternity? Because it's not going to be with Jesus. The road is narrow. You have got to, got to, got to study for yourself. Please study for yourself. I know I've said this a million times in this video and we say it in all of our videos. I hope that you are listening and heeding our warning regarding these issues because if you aren't, then you are risking your eternal life. You might think that just listening to some people who sometimes have sensationalist ideas and who sometimes share doctrines of devils doesn't impact you, but it does. As I've already stated, we listen to one person who discusses matters of faith, and that is it. None other. Zero zip, not a zilch. We don't listen to gardening videos anymore because people bring up lies and they share corporate propaganda in those. I mean, the, the lies just go on and on and on, and people act like they have to have all the answers if they're asked a question. If you ask us a question and we don't know the answer, we're going to tell you we don't know the answer. And there is so much that we don't know. The more you study your Bible and the more Holy Spirit guides you into all truth, the more you will realize that you, have, you don't know anything. <laughs> so, yes. My husband and I are sorely inadequate to be sharing what we are learning with you. Absolutely. If you think that, I agree with you wholeheartedly, 100%. But you know what? We are studying to prove ourselves, un to studying to show ourselves approved unto God as we are directed to. We are studying hard. We are spending, I don't even know how many hours a week trying to understand exactly what is desired of us and focusing on that we do our videos and batches so that we are studying for ourselves for our personal relationships and then these videos are an offshoot of that as our the videos are a result of that we don't study for the videos we just share in the videos what we found and we hope that this has been edifying to you. We hope this has been beneficial to you. We, or at least I do, I don't know if my husband does, I do pray for you, whoever you are. And I hope that you pray for us as well because we are called to do so for each other because hard times are coming. We will be persecuted. Hold on to your crown. Yes, difficult times are coming, but you're gonna go one way or another. If you are not speaking out about the bad things that are happening in the world. If you're not speaking out against evil, if you are not speaking out and saying this is the one answer, that government is not the answer, that the world is not gonna get better, it's only gonna get worse. If you are not doing so 100% sold out to Christ doing these things, <sighs> then things are going to be even harder for you. It's not too late. God's arm, his hand is still extended. People can still come to him. We are seeing division more and more. We're going to keep seeing that more and more. We have seen division within our family as far as our extended family goes and friends 
who just completely lost their minds. Uh, we've got a video up on that, losing friends and family in the end times because that's foretold. This is going to happen. You need to be prepared for these things to happen. Your creator wrote this book for you, for these times, so that you know what's gonna happen, you know how to handle it, you know exactly what kind of person you are expected to be, you know that much has been given to you. Even if you're living in poverty in a Western society country, that's still considered much being given to you because you have access to tools that people don't have access to who can't even feed themselves, who are starving to death. Little is expected of them, much is expected of you. You're better than this. Please stop spreading false doctrines. Please stop watching people who are lying to your face. We make mistakes, we are human. God is working a great work in both myself and my husband and we are sharing our journey with you. We hope it has been beneficial to you. If so, please, please do like this video because we had to turn comments off on YouTube anyways, and be sure to subscribe to our weekly newsletter so you don't miss new videos. Please have a most beautiful and blessed day. Keep your eye on the sky. Know that there is crazy technology. They can do all sorts of things in the sky. Rapture is a false doctrine, by the way, so I anticipate a fake one at some point and just just hang in there if if times are tough hang in there check out that playlist of songs that i listen to it is uplifting for the most part <laughs> there are a couple of a uh, couple songs such as 18 bullet holes by Waterdeep, uh that when you first listen to it you might go whoa but if you listen to it repeatedly and listen to the lyrics it's incredible it, it is one of my favorite songs. I have to be in the right mind space to listen to it. Wow. But God cries for those who are lost. And we don't want anyone to be lost. We want everyone to be found by the Lord. We want you to be walking in the path of uprighteous, of righteousness. We want you to be uh, joyous in your sufferings. It's hard to be joyous in sufferings. When I am struggling to breathe, <laughs> it's hard to be joyous in it. Bless those who persecute you. Love your enemies. As Yeshua told us to. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. My husband and I say that almost daily, literally, because we have so many issues with so many people not doing what they should be doing and actively harming people forgive them father for they know not what they do thank you so much for being here have a great day